sort of joke in connection with the ascension. It went something like this. Jesus had just finished returning into heaven, and all the angels were gathered around him, and they were congratulating him. They were congratulating him on his victory over sin and death. And as all the angels were crowding around and, and saying, good job, well done, one of the angels said, Jesus, what's the plan now? You've won this, this victory over death and sin. There's now this, this wonderful news of eternal life. What's the plan to get the word out? Jesus looked at the angel and said, don't worry, I've got it covered. I've given that job to my 11 remaining disciples. Several of the angels' jaws dropped, and their eyes got wide, and one of them said, Really? What's the backup plan? <laughs> Jesus replied, There isn't one. Think about that. When Jesus returned to heaven, he did not give a backup plan. He did not give a backup plan to those 11 disciples going out with the message of salvation for all the world. And think about who those 11 men were. Most of them weren't highly educated. They weren't skilled. They didn't have vast personal fortunes to buy up billboard space or advertising. They didn't own fleets of ships and horses and couriers that they could send out to the far corners of the earth. They were 11 guys from the backwater part of a backwater province in the Roman Empire. It's quite a wonder that the gospel message survived a year, much less about 2,000, give or take. And then those disciples, as they disappeared from this earth, they took that message of the gospel and they wrote it down, not on stone. They didn't chisel it into metal. They put it on paper. And yeah, paper in the ancient world was a little different than paper nowadays. It wasn't made out of wood pulp. It was made out of reeds, and it was made out of, out of the hides of animals. But just like paper today, paper in the ancient world could be very easily destroyed, crumpled up and thrown away. Paper could be torn up, gotten rid of, thrown in the garbage. Paper could be set on fire. I know I'm not going to do that here in front of my church. But think about how fragile paper is. And then think about the reality that this much is what it takes to put a Bible in paper. This much stuff was copied on paper accurately through 2,000 years for you and for me to have it. Foolish, isn't it? Who would have dreamed that God would put the most important message in all of history into the mouths of frail, faulty people and then entrust it onto paper about the most frail, way of preserving something you can imagine. And yet, it's preserved. We have more copies of the Bible from the ancient world than any other document. Not even the, the great Greek philosophers or poets or writers have as many copies of their works as we have of the Bible. God chose to take the foolish things of this world and to shame this world's wisdom. And that's because through that word, through that simple preaching and through that simple paper, the word in flesh comes to us. When we think about Christ's coming to us this Advent season, we ought to remember how it is that he comes. He comes in ways that seem foolish and weak to this world. But they are strong because the one who comes through them is the Lord of hosts. A lesson from 1 Corinthians chapters 1 and 2. For the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, 
But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one, the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, it pleased God through the folly of what we preach to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks seek wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and folly to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For consider your calling, brothers. Not many of you were wise according to worldly standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, even things that are not, to bring to nothing things that are, so that no human being might boast in the presence of God. And because of him, you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God, righteousness and sanctification and redemption, so that, as it is written, let the one who boasts boast in the Lord. And I, when I came to you, brothers, did not come proclaiming to you the testimony of God with lofty speech or wisdom, for I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling. And my speech and my message were not in plausible words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, so that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. This is the word of the Lord. We'll continue with our offering. 